Here's an HDR 360 photo from the Ricoh Theta Z1, the most highly regarded 360 camera for photos. Now here's a photo from a 360 camera that costs less than half of the Theta Z1. That's just one of the surprising results from this virtual tour comparison. Stick around and find out. Whether you're a real estate agent looking for the easiest but decent 360 camera or you're a new virtual tour photographer looking for an affordable 360 camera that still offers high quality, you'll see which was the best 360 camera for virtual tours for your needs. We're going to compare 11 360 cameras and a DSLR grouped into three price brackets. We're going to score the cameras using a common yet challenging scene for virtual tours, a dimly lit bedroom with a bright and sunny window. We're going to score the cameras using the industry's first objective scale for detail, dynamic range, and ease of use. These scores are not arbitrary. Each half point represents an increase of one stop highlight range and one stop in shadow range. As for detail, each half point corresponds to one stop additional detail. Now, how about ease of use? How do we quantify that? Here's what I did. I looked at every camera and determined the number of steps needed from shooting all the way to stitching and processing the photo. So the less steps there are required, the higher the score will be. So the first group is 360 cameras under $300. And the first camera in this group is the GoPro Fusion which is now only $178. I remember buying this for $699 when it was first released. So is it a good deal for virtual tours? Well, the image quality is pretty good. In JPEG, you know, it's got good detail and good dynamic range, but where it really shines is when you shoot in RAW. When you shoot in RAW, it has better detail, but also amazing dynamic range. In fact, when I compared these cameras for single shot, we're just not counting HDR or bracketing or anything like that. For a single shot, the GoPro Fusion was the highest that I saw. So it's affordable and has amazing dynamic range. But should you buy it? Well, there are several things you need to be aware of. Number one is it has no self timer. It has no manual exposure, no HDR, no bracketing. And it's very hard to connect to the app. In fact, I, I couldn't connect to the app when I was taking these test shots. And even if you want to adjust the exposure compensation using the on-camera menu, you have to go several levels deep in the menu before you can get to exposure compensation. So shooting with the GoPro Fusion can be a pain, especially if you want to do manual HDR. So it, it is quite tedious and that's why I don't really recommend it for virtual tours. The next camera in this category is the Xiaomi Mi Sphere. Also the Mad Venture, they're both the same camera. Now this camera was released back in 2017 and it has been one of the most popular 360 cameras for photography. How is it in 2020? Well, in 2020, it's still one of the most detailed 360 cameras. Now, the dynamic range is not that amazing. Uh, it has good dynamic range for shadows, but the highlight range is limited. Now, a popular technique for the Mi Sphere is to use bracketing, and it, this does improve the dynamic range, although not enough to do a window pull down. Now, with the right technique, you can get amazing dynamic range with the Xiaomi Mi Sphere. In fact, you can get even better dynamic range than the Theta Z1 HDR. Here, take a look. Now, if you want to know how to shoot and edit your photos to make them look like this, I'm actually creating a tutorial that will show you exactly how from start to finish. If you want to learn more about it, check out the link in the description below. So would I recommend the Mi Sphere? Absolutely. It's one of the more affordable 360 cameras and it has amazing quality if you use the right technique. Now, the next camera is one that you might not have considered for 360 photography, but it's actually quite capable. It's the Kandao KuCam, the original one. What's so good about it? Well, two things. Number one is the stitching. It has very wide lenses, around 220 degrees, if I recall correctly. And with the wide overlap, it can achieve nearly perfect stitching. The other thing that makes it cool is the so-called Express DNG8 mode. Now you may have heard of Candos Raw Plus software, which is an image stacking software. Now the KuCam can do the stacking in the camera 
you don't need to use Scandal Raw Plus. So with Express DNG8, the shadow range is much greater than a regular shot. With a single Express DNG8 shot, you actually have enough total dynamic range that you can capture a, the full range from highlights to shadows of this test scene. You just have to make sure to expose for the highlights. Now, because we're exposing for the highlights, you will have to normalize the exposure in post-processing, which means that there will be some noise, but you can reduce that noise with the right technique. Now, the downside of the KuCam is the resolution. Each photo is limited to around 4K, so there's not as much detail as other 360 cameras. Nonetheless, it's still a good option for 360 photos. Next is one of the most popular 360 cameras for photography, the Ricoh Theta. This one is the Theta V, but and this one's a little over $300. But there's a very similar one called the Theta SC2, and that one is just at $299. Now, there are two things that make the Theta really good for photography. One is that it can stitch photos in the camera. You won't have to do any editing at all. The second thing is it can shoot in HDR photos and stitch them and merge them in the camera. If you're not going to edit your photos, the Theta's HDR mode is one of the highest dynamic range that you can achieve without any editing at all. Now, if you have the Theta V, you can get even better dynamic range. That's because the Theta V accepts plugins from the Theta plugin store. And there's this plugin called the Dual Fisheye plugin that can be used to achieve even better image quality. You can improve the dynamic range further than what you can get from the built-in HDR mode. Now, the main downside of the Theta is the detail. It's, it's okay, it's not terrible, but it's not that great. Um, and there are several other 360 cameras that are sharper than the Theta. Now, even though the Theta V and Theta SC2 are not as detailed as other 360 cameras, it's still a very good 360 camera for photography. And it's actually the camera that I recommend most for those who are just starting out or who are looking for the easiest 360 camera. The next group is 360 cameras from $300 to $600. And the first camera in this group is the Insta360 ONE X. Now, the ONE X is well known for 360 videos, but it's also a very capable camera for 360 photos. It has several features that make it really good. Number one, it's got full manual exposure. Second, it has very wide support, including compatibility with Matterport. Three, it has an HDR mode that can stitch and merge the photos in one step and is one of the very few that has an HDR exposure interval of 4 EV. And because of this, it can have amazing dynamic range that rivals that of the Theta V and Theta Z1 HDR mode. Now, as good as that sounds, the actual image quality potential of the One X is even higher. If you use the right workflow, you can get up to two stops additional dynamic range. Recently, the One X has become sold out in most places, but if you can find it, it is a very good 360 camera for photos. Now, the next camera in this group is the Insta360 ONE R. Now, most people know it for its modular capability and it's for 360 videos. And it's been underestimated for virtual tours, but it's actually also very capable. Not only does it have most of the features of the Insta360 ONE X, but it also has something new, which is 9-shot HDR in RAW DNG. And it can stitch and merge the photos in one step. Now, the reason most people don't realize how good the One R is for 360 photos is because when you stitch the photos, those HDR photos in the Insta360 Studio, it looks good, but not fantastic. But if you use the right technique, it can look amazing. Now, you remember that shot that I showed you at the beginning of this video, the one where I compared a photo to the Theta Z1? Well, that other photo was from the Insta360 ONE R, and you can see that it has even better dynamic range than the Theta Z1 HDR mode, and it also has perfect stitching. But you're not going to get this result from Insta360 Studio. You need the right third-party software and the right technique. The ONE X and the ONE R are the easiest ways to get dynamic range of 10 
for under $800. The next camera in this group is the GoPro Max. What's great about it is that it can stitch the photos in the camera. You don't have to do anything. Now, one disadvantage though is that it doesn't straighten the photos. So you'll have to make sure that your tripod is level. Another issue is that the exposure controls are very limited. In terms of image quality, its detail and dynamic range are average. Compared to the Theta V, it has less dynamic range, but better detail. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a raw mode, unlike the GoPro Fusion. Would I get it for a virtual tour? Maybe not, but if you already have it for 360 videos, it's fine to use it for virtual tours. Next camera is the Kandao KuCam 8K. Actually, the first 8K consumer 360 camera. It also has one of the largest sensors for consumer 360 cameras with a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor. Now, it's also a very good camera for 360 photos because of the DNG 8 mode. You can shoot a burst of 8 shots in raw DNG. Then you can use the Kandao Raw Plus to stack those photos to decrease the noise without any ghosting. Now, please note that the DNG8 mode increases the dynamic range by increasing the shadow range. So for window pulldowns, you need to expose for the highlights. The dynamic range is very good and you can improve this even further with the right technique. So the KuCam is great and now it's even better because Kandao informed me that they're actually updating the firmware to add built-in RAW+. Plus. So you won't need to use the RAW Plus software anymore. And rumor has it that they're also working on an HDR mode for the KuCam 8K. So with these improvements, the KuCam could be a really good 360 camera for virtual tours. Now it does have one major downside, which is that the shutter speed is limited to one second. Hopefully they'll be able to increase that. Let's see. Next is the X phase. This is the most detailed 360 camera on the planet. That's 25 lenses. It takes a capture resolution of 200 megapixels, then stitches them into photos that are 134 megapixels. It's so detailed, it's actually more detailed than an average DSLR panorama. Not only that, but it also has amazing dynamic range because it takes true multi-shot HDR photos. And yet, Somehow, it avoids any ghosting, even when there's movement all around you. It's really incredible. Now, the problem with the X phase is the stitching. See, when I take photos outdoors, the stitching looks very smooth. But when I take indoor photos, then usually there's a stitching error or two. And it's not a huge error, but it is quite noticeable. Now, besides stitching, the other issue of the X phase is glare. It's very susceptible to glare. In my tutorial, I'll show you how to get better quality from the X-Phase. I'll also show you how to fix stitching errors. So how is the X-Phase for ease of use? Well, surprisingly, it's actually very straightforward to use. You just copy the files and you can stitch them and fuse the HDR in the same step. And you can batch process your photos. So the workflow is actually pretty good. Now recently, several people have asked me if you can use the X-Phase with Matterport or with Cupix. Now, you cannot use it with Matterport, and I have not tried it with Cupix, but I have tried it with a similar 3D virtual tour service called Beneco. Here's the results. So would I recommend x for virtual tours? For outdoors, definitely. For indoors, well, you do have those stitching errors and glare to be aware of. If you don't mind the stitching errors and glare, or you know how to fix them, then the x is one of the best 360 cameras for virtual tours. Next is the Theta Z1. This is one of the best virtual tour 360 cameras out there. In fact, if you're not going to edit your photos at all, this has the best quality overall. The detail and dynamic range is second only to the X phase. And unlike the X phase, this has nearly perfect stitching and very little glare. So if I were to choose a 360 camera where I wouldn't have the time to edit the photos, then this is the one that I would choose. Now, if you don't have the budget for it, don't worry, because as you see, you can get image quality that's very close to the Theta Z1 with other 360 cameras, such as the Xiaomi Mi Sphere or the Insta360 ONE R. 
You just have to use the right workflow. Next is the Lab Panel Pilot 1. This is one of the more detailed 360 cameras. It also has good dynamic range and it is very easy to use with a fast workflow. Its other main feature for virtual tours is that it can create 3D virtual tours similar to Matterport automatically. They call it pilot tour and you just take photos using the pilot tour mode and you upload the photos to their cloud and they'll stitch the photos for you and arrange it for you automatically. Now, how accurate is the pilot tour? Uh, to be honest, it's not yet very accurate. Now for what it's worth, it does place the hot spots in approximately the right places, but it's just not super accurate. Is the Pilot 1 a good camera for virtual tours? There are three issues. First, the HDR mode has ghosting, but this isn't a big deal for virtual tours. Second, if there are objects that are closer than others, then the stitching will not be perfect. Third is the price. At $1,200, it's one of the most expensive 360 cameras for virtual tours. And at the same time, the image quality is not even better than the Theta Z1 or the X Phase, which costs less than the Lab Panel Pad 1. So the only thing I can think of is the Pilot Tour. If they can improve it to the point where it's as good as or almost as good as Matterport or Cupix, then I can see how the price would be easily justifiable. Now here are the cameras with the highest scores. All of them are very good choices for virtual tours. Now to keep this final comparison fair, I won't show the names until after you've made your choice. Now let me know in the comments which one you chose. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in 360.